So this is the third part of our series about what is our role in the world. The first part we talked about who we are, we're shamans. That is if you follow my teaching. <laughs> and then we talked about what is the world. And the world is a creation of accelerating change. Now, the human world is a rebellion against change. The human world is trying to stop the flow of change and create a stable structure where those who are in power can remain in power. But since that goes against the flow of the whole cosmic creation, I don't think that's going to be successful. So we're looking at a collapse of the order created by human beings to try to keep things the same, a collapse of the culture, a collapse of the social order. So now, what is our role in all of this? Well, first of all, we should not join any faction. We should not declare ourselves to be a member of any team, any nation, any political philosophy or party, any religion, any social group, and so on and so forth. All the categories that are defined by culture are bogus because, as I said, they're built on the assumption that we have to stop all of this change <laughs> so that the leaders can remain in the leadership position, so that the rich and powerful can remain rich and powerful. But it's just not to be, and it's not ever to be. So that means the days of any culture are numbered. It's not possible to predict when, but it is inevitable that there will be a black swan event. We talked about this way back in the beginning of this channel in Apophatic Antifragility series. So then, we don't identify ourselves as this religion, that religion, this country, that country, this race, or whatever, then what is our role? Our role is to wait, to work on ourselves, and to be ready when the conditions demand it to act. And you'll know when that is if you're connected with universal cosmic wisdom. So the idea is to get connected, <laughs> first of all, to really be a shaman. And then your role is to withdraw yourself from all the categories and identities out in this world, even as people in general become more and more identified with them our role is to step back, work on ourselves as much as possible. In other words, if everybody's fighting with each other, then they're not going to be fighting with us. So we have the space to work on ourselves. This is the duty of a shaman. First of all comes your sadhana, whatever that means. And on this channel, we've discussed so many different views, so many different paths, so many different methods and scriptures and so on. And all of these are good. 
All of these are valuable. And although entheogens are valuable if you know how to use them. The point is to get plugged into intuitive wisdom. However you do it, that's a detail. You don't need to become a Buddhist to use the teachings of the Buddha to attain it. You don't need to become a Hindu to use the suggestions in the Vedas or the Tantras. See what I'm getting at? We can pick and choose whatever seems to work for us, whatever is practical, to advance spiritually as much as possible so that when it does come time for us to act, we'll have the best source of information. The news cannot help you. The news is completely biased. Your religious leaders, your political leaders, all of them are part of the problem, not the solution. Most likely, they'll either be an economic, political, or environmental crisis, either locally or globally, that will force everybody out of their comfort zone. And that's the time to act. See, when, when people are really in crisis mode is also the best time to propagate spiritual knowledge because the need is greatest. And so everybody who has taken teachings from this channel has something to share with others, something of value, something important something worth speaking about because it'll make a difference in other people's lives because it will help them survive whatever crisis brings us to the point where we have to do this we don't act unless we have to or if someone inquires then we give the appropriate teachings. In either case, we give the teachings that they need in the moment, at the time, according to the situation. So what else do we do while we're waiting? We make art, music, painting, sculpture, writing, videos, Hey, we make art to spread this teaching as far as possible, to enlighten as many people as possible, to take advantage of the technological network civilization. It's, it's not going to last too much longer. But while it's there, take advantage, use it, get some value out of it something positive. Propagate this information. Spread this teaching. Because when the crisis hits, whatever it is, see, you're not going to know what direction it's coming from. You're not going to be able to predict only that there is going to be a black swan. There is going to be a crisis. It's inevitable. It happens every time, in every civilization, in every culture that ever existed. So until that happens, until it's necessary for you to act, then your duty is to work on yourself and to spread this knowledge to others through whatever art you practice. If your art is talking to people, making friendships, networking. Well, do that. But don't make plans. Huh? Don't make big plans. What is it? Plan B? Huh? Oh, no, game B. This work 
of people trying to network together and figure out solutions for the problems of today. Well, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a nice idea. You got to give them that credit. It's a nice idea. But since the game B is based on game A and supported by it and lives in the middle of it all, when game A collapses, it's going to take down game B too. Whatever plan you make is in the context of the present culture. When the culture collapses, that plan becomes meaningless. So it's better not to make a plan, but to wait until the crisis situation presents itself in real time, in the present. Then you can see how to react to it. Because we, we can't predict what kind of crisis it's, go, it's going to be or how it's going to manifest. So how can we make a plan for it? But since it's going to seem to be surprising, irrational, and unanticipated, our response should also be surprising, irrational, and unanticipated. In other words, no plan based on things that happened in the past is going to be reliable or is going to be applicable to whatever crisis comes next. It's always surprising. It's always crazy. It comes out of the blue sky. So our response to the crisis, whatever it is, has to be spontaneous. It can't be planned. It can't be forethought. So that means maybe a good exercise would be to learn how to play jazz <laughs> or blues or any kind of uh, improvised music or learn how to do verbal improvisation. Uh, learn how to spontaneously react or respond to whatever situation you find yourself in. Now, of course, this requires mindfulness, which is why we've been teaching from Mahasatipatthana Sutta. But I think people find it boring, which is kind of incredible to me, but it's required to be mindful of what's going on in a crisis not simply lose your head and run around in a panic, but look at it. Get what's happening. Grok it in fullness. Duplicate it. Make a model of it. Understand and respond. This can all happen in a second or two. So what I'm saying as a shaman, as someone who is outside all the different categories of religions and spiritual paths and politics and economics and all that bullshit, huh? it's bullshit because it's going to collapse someday. It could be tomorrow. It could be 50 or 100 years from now. We don't know and we never will know. We never will be able to predict it, especially the timing. Although we can say, just by reviewing the data, looks like we got an economic, political, social, and climate situations that could turn into a crisis any minute. What to speak of military. So this is the world. The world is always on the verge of collapse. It's always an incipient crisis. And we never know what that crisis is going to be exactly. But those of us who have developed powers, who have developed wisdom, who have knowledge of the higher teachings, have to be ready at all times to respond spontaneously in times of crisis. This is our real role. And the ultimate is not to rebuild society. <laughs> the, 
the ultimate is to scrap the whole idea of culture the whole idea of a rigid hierarchical male dominant structure and go back to the jungle go back to the land go back to the heart the mother country the mother world and hear her hear her compassionate instructions in the heart and share them with all other people so that their suffering and anxiety will be minimized and they will be able to make giant steps on the path towards complete enlightenment. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.